Welcome back to our video series on the Millwright Power Route Plus CNC router. In this video, we'll see how to control the router using Universal G Code Sender, how to set up your stock for cutting, how to home the machine, and I'll run you through a sort of pre flight checklist before you fire it up and start running your parts. First, we need to turn on the router. To do this, simply disengage the e-stop button on the front of the router and you will hear the fans turn on. We've got to fire up the laptop, open up UGS from the desktop, and plug in the USB cable from the router. If you click the little plug, the machine will connect and our machine controls will become available. To move the machine around, you're going to need to use the jog controller. These buttons will let you move the machine around to your desired location. Before we move the machine, we always need to do a visual check to ensure that it's free to move in the direction that we want to go. We never want to run our router or tool into an obstacle or run it past the extents of the X, Y, or Z axis of travel. So take a look first and be sure that you're not gonna hit anything. The X direction moves the machine side to side with X plus moving to the right and X minus moving to the left. The Y axis moves front to back, so Y plus moves away from us and Y minus moves towards us. The Z axis moves the router up and down with Z plus moving up and Z minus moving down. On the jog controller, you've got to set your units, which for us will normally be inches. We also want to take a look at the step sizes. This is how far the machine will travel each time we press a jog button. So we can set one step distance for the X and Y directions and a different step size for Z. When you press a jog button once, the machine will move the desired step size and realize that if you change your mind and don't want to travel that far, even if you press the opposite button to go back in the other direction, it's going to complete its travel move before turning around and going the other way. So it's a good idea to keep these step sizes small so you don't accidentally travel too far. The best way to zoom around with this machine is to set a rather small step size, say one inch for the X and Y and 0.1 inch for the Z, and then jog the machine by holding the button. This way the machine will continue to jog until we let go of the button, and then it will stop right where it is instead of continuing to travel. When you're close to the area you're moving to and you want to be more precise with your movements, you can change the step size to something smaller, like maybe 0.1 inch in the X and Y direction and 0.01 inch in the Z to nudge your way to the exact position that you need. Before you begin setting up stock for your job, you might need to get the router out of the way and the easiest way to do this is to home the router by clicking Home Machine from the Common Actions tab in UGS. The axes will each move to their respective limit switches one at a time, and the machine will park all the way in the back left corner, allowing you easy access to the bed. Again, always take one last look at the router before homing to make sure it's not going to crash into something on its way back. At this point, you're ready to set up your stock on the machine for cutting. Depending on the shape and size of the piece you plan to machine, you might need to handle this setup differently. Oftentimes, setting up your stock requires considerable care and consideration. From time to time, special jigs or hold downs need to be made in order to secure the part. But for this tutorial, we're going to see two of our most common types of stock setups. One thing to think about here is the orientation of your stock. The orientation of the box point in Fusion 360 needs to match the orientation of your stock in the router. In this case, the y-axis points the long way toward the back of the machine, so I need to orient my stock that way. It would be a problem if I positioned my stock on the router differently than it was oriented in Fusion 360. One type of stock setup that we use quite a bit is flat aluminum stock like we use for gussets or mounting plates. It's a good idea to mark on your stock the exact size of the part to be machined so you're sure you have plenty of space to cut it. Then, outside of that line, pre-drill some holes to fasten the stock down. For this, we're going to use some screws with a low-profile head with threads big enough to bite into the spoil board material and a length short enough not to go through the spoil board. Before screwing the sheet down, carefully check to make sure there's not any chips or debris on the table. If there are high spots that might cause the part not to lay flat, you can sand those down and also check the underside of the stock 
for loose bits of debris as well. Now you can securely screw the stock down to the bed. For this example, I'm going to be cutting the outer perimeter of the part from the stock, so I don't need to worry about aligning the stock edges with the machine axes. If my stock is a little bit crooked on the bed, it's not going to hurt anything. The low-profile screw heads reduce the risk of the machine running into one while the bit's traveling over the surface. The more objects we have sticking up above our stock, the more likely we are to have a potential collision. We should also make sure that our clearance heights, which are set in Fusion, are plenty high enough to go over the screw heads that we plan to use. The other piece of stock I want to set up will be a piece of 1 inch by 2 inch tubing with 1 16th inch walls. Once this part is snug in the vise, I'm about ready to go. The key to making parts accurately on the vise is to have the vise properly aligned to the machine's axes. This process is a bit of a pain, so we don't like to loosen or remove the vise unless we absolutely need to. If you think you need to take the vise off, ask a manufacturing mentor first, and don't try to reinstall it on the bed without help. These are the most common ways that we will secure our stock for routing, but there are other types of hold downs and clamps that might also be used. If you think you need a different option, check with a manufacturing mentor. For now, these pieces of stock are just about ready to go, but first, back to the computer. Another area you should know how to use in UGS is the controller state window, or the DRO, the digital readout, which tells us the router's precise position in the work area and allows us to zero our coordinates in a given position in order to start cutting apart. First, understand that the machine has two different home positions. Machine home is the X, Y, Z coordinate that the machine is in when you first start it up. If the machine was homed using the home button before shutting down, then this machine home position should be in the back left corner of the machine. If it wasn't homed, then this coordinate could be somewhere else in the space. The location of the machine home coordinate is seen in the DRO as the smaller numbers on the bottom next to X, Y, and Z. These numbers are set when the machine powers on from whatever position it's in, so that's why it's nice to click the home button and send the machine to its home corner before powering down. More important for us is the job home position. Each time we run a job, we have to give the machine a location to start cutting from, known as the job home coordinate. The job home for a given part is going to be the same thing as the box point that was established in Fusion 360 when we made the toolpaths. It's not the same on every job. Sometimes we set this point to the top of the stock in the center. Sometimes we set it to the front left corner on the top of the stock. Sometimes we set it to the bottom of the stock. The point is, you've got to know where the box point was set in Fusion 360 in order to correctly set your job home for a part. If you set the wrong job home, the machine might think it's starting a cut from the center of a part when it's actually starting it from the front left corner. This could definitely ruin the stock or it could cause a collision and damage the bit or machine. So we absolutely must verify that we're homing to the correct spot on the stock before we begin. As a double check, when the G-code file is loaded up in UGS, we can see the location of the box point represented by the red, blue, and green axes. In this file, the home position is on the top of the stock in the front left corner, which we can see here in UGS but on this file, the home position is on the top of the stock in the center, which we can also see here in UGS. This needs to be one item that you check and verify before running your job. So to set your job home, jog the machine to the desired location. Remember to set your step distance to something precise when you get close and position the center of your tool over the box point. First, get the X and Y axes in position, then in the DRO, click the X0 and Y0 buttons to set these coordinates as your job zero. Next, with the step size set to 0 0.01 inch, jog the Z axis down toward your part one click at a time. Slide a piece of plain paper under the bit and keep lowering the bit until it just barely touches the paper. Zero the Z axis in this position, then set the step size to a larger increment, like one inch, and raise the z-axis that amount. From this position, we want to do an air cut. My x and y coordinates are at the job zero, and my z is exactly one inch above job zero. 
For now, I'm going to re-zero the z-axis in this position for an air cut. Air cutting is like a dress rehearsal. You run the job just like you want to on the real part, but with the cutting tool raised up a safe distance above your work. Sometimes you think you've done everything right and the machine still surprises you when you start the job and maybe runs in a direction you didn't expect or makes some other unpredictable movement. 90% of the time, everything works as expected. And when there's an issue, 90% of the time, it's a simple fix in one of your toolpaths or the exporter. But you don't want to have the machine do something wild while you're trying to cut your real material. So an air cut is always recommended, both for safety and assurance that your part will come out right. So to load the G-code file you want in UGS, click the Open Folder icon and make your way to the Team 20 NC Code folder in the Student Shared Drive. Find the file you want from the list and open it in UGS. Give this file an inspection in the visualizer and make sure that the work home position is where you think it should be and matches where you set your job home on the router. Double check the yellow lines showing your clearance heights as well as the depth of the cut below the part surface. Also double check that your X, Y, and Z axes are zeroed in the safe position above your workpiece. If everything looks good, you can start your air cut. Click play on the toolbar, but be ready to press the pause button if something goes wrong. You can also pause the machine with the red button on the front and resume with the green button. If a person or the machine is in immediate danger, you can always hit the emergency stop, but we want to save that for emergencies or you'll have to do your entire job setup all over again. Watch the air cut for a minute or so. Verify that the machine is traveling where it should and that the feed rate is what it should be and that it's executing all of its travel moves as we expect. Once you're satisfied that the real job will come out correctly, you can stop the air cut and return the machine to its job home. Your z-axis should still be one inch above your workpiece, so jog it down by exactly one inch again and re-zero the z in your actual work home position. From here, jog it back up to a safe distance, but don't re-zero. We don't want to start the job with the bit touching the stock. At this point, you're just about ready to run your job for real, but there are still a couple of things you need to check and verify before you try cutting. With your G-code file loaded in UGS, click File and Edit G-code to open up the G-code editor. This window allows you to make small tweaks to your G-code if you wish, but we're going to use it to verify that we have our machine set up properly to run this job. Near the top, you should see some lines of gray text and parentheses. One of these starts with T1, which is information about the tool that will be used for this job. After T1, we see the tool diameter, which says D equals 0.1875. And also on this line, we see the description flat end mill. So now's a great time to check and uh, verify that you've actually got the 3 sixteenths end mill in the machine. Don't assume that the correct tool is in the router already. Even if you used it yesterday, someone else might have used it since then and could have changed the bit. If you have to change your bit, realize that you will need to go through the steps to re-zero your z-axis again with a new bit. The next thing we want to verify is the spindle speed. Even though the G-code can't control the spindle speed on this machine, the correct spindle speed setting for our tool diameter and feed rates should still be shown near the top of the program. We're looking for a purple line of code that starts with S followed by a number. In this case, it's S14000. Take a look at the RPM chart on the router and make sure it is set to the correct speed setting. For 14,000 RPMs, I need to be on setting 3. Once again, check everything over. Is the tool set to the correct job home position with the z-axis raised to a safe distance? Has the DRO been zeroed at the job home position? Is the correct tool in the router? Is the collet tightened? Is the router set to the correct RPM? Is the front shield in place? Is your lubricant or cutting fluid ready to go? Is the area around your job clear of obstacles and debris? Is your stock securely fastened in place? If the answer is yes, you're ready to begin. Turn on the power to the router and be ready to pause the machine if necessary and click play to start your job. Once you're sure the job is running smoothly, you can relax and watch the magic. 
When cutting aluminum, be sure to give a little shot of WD-40 or cutting fluid now and then to prevent overheating and aluminum clogging. But keep your hands and arms out of the moving machine. Now that this example's done, I can change my machine over for the next job. This means I need to change my tool and set a new job home. To change my tool, I need to first turn the router off and then I'll unplug the power supply while I work. Rotate the spindle by hand and press the black spindle lock button until it presses in. Use the collet wrench to loosen the collet and take care not to let the tool fall out and hit something as this could chip the bit. Put the bit safely back in its place in the drawer and then install the new bit. In this case, both bits use a quarter inch diameter shaft, so I don't have to change my collet, but you might need to change that too. With the spindle lock pressed, tighten the collet with the wrench, making sure the bit is nice and snug and won't slip during use. From here, we can go back to the jog controls. Verify that your step size and feed rate are okay for these movements and jog the machine to its new job home coordinates. Once I get to the right spot, I can re-zero my X, Y, and Z axes, and once again, I'll raise my bit for an air cut. I'll load up my new G-code file in UGS and verify that the work home coordinate is at the top center of the stock, the same spot I set on my machine. The air cut looks good, so now I'll drop my Z back down to the actual job home. Re-zero the Z-axis in this position and then raise it to a safe starting height. Before I start the job, quick recap. My tool is set to the correct job home position for this part and is raised to a safe Z height. The DRO has been zeroed in the correct job home position. The correct tool is in the router. The collet is tightened. The router is set to the correct RPM for the job. The front shield is in place. I have my cutting fluid ready to go. The area around my job is free from debris. My stock is securely fastened in place. This job is ready to run. Stay close by while the job runs so you can keep an eye on the machine. If something bad happens, like the machine crashes, the stock comes loose, or the bit breaks, stop the job right away and move the machine to a safe position. If you notice a potential hazard, like a piece of material gets into your cutting path, you can always pause the job, safely remove the obstacle, and then resume. When the job is finished, turn the router off and send the machine to the machine home position in the back left corner so you have plenty of space to remove your stock and clean up. And the next user can fire up the machine in its home position. Use the vacuum to clean up the work area and be careful when removing your stock because the edges could be sharp. When you're finished with the router, you can power it down by pressing the e-stop on the front. Now you know how to jog the Power Route Plus with Universal G-Code Sender, how to home the machine, how to set up your stock for machining, set up job home coordinates, run an air cut and a job, change the router over to a new tool setup, and clean up after the work is done. Refer back to this video if you need to see something again, and always feel free to ask a manufacturing mentor for help when you have questions. Thanks for watching.